Okay, so here we go. It's nine o'clock. I decided to wait a little bit longer for this one um, because I had some people come in later on the last live stream that I did and so I thought maybe this would be a little bit more convenient for people. And also some changes that I made. Hopefully the lighting is better and it's not as grainy. I think it looks a little bit better on my end, but um, I don't know. I hope it looks better on your end. So, uh, that's really loud. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. about that. I hope I didn't give you a shot of my butt. <laughs> um, anyway, I wanted to shut the door on my room because Ray's watching TV and, um, hi Michael. Oh, I see the wrench. So that came good through, through good. Okay, good. So, um, Michael is my moderator. He is going to keep control over the chat. Um, I guess we should do a little housekeeping, housekeeping, um, housekeeping before we get started. So just some ground rules. If you've never been to any of my live streams before, if you've never watched my videos and you've come in for this one, um, I don't allow, um, mean things. Hi, amazing Friday. I'm glad you're here. I don't allow people to say mean things or things that are inappropriate. Every time I do these things, my nose itches. It's pollen season here in Georgia and it's really, really bad here. So anyway, we want to keep it clean. We want to be nice. And um, really my purpose for this video is to help each other out because I think that, you know, we're all hung up on all the um, doom and gloom of what's going on. And there is a bad, you know, there are bad things happening. People are getting sick. Um, people are dying. Um, people are losing money. I'm one of them. I've lost a lot of money through all of this and I'm not the only one and then there are people who are being overworked right now to our health care providers and the um, essential people that we need to get us through this crisis so um, you know we want to keep those people in mind as well so anyway I just wanted to talk about you know how this could actually be a positive thing or some po maybe not a positive thing that happened but maybe some positive things can come out of this so the first thing that came to my mind is you know we live in a very fast-paced world everybody has deadlines and it doesn't matter who you are you know uh, you have bills to pay you have a work uh, you know if you're working you have those type of things you have uh, even if you're a kid you have homework assignments to be done everybody has something that they have to do and they have to do it now and we want it now and you know we're so busy all the time and this has really forced us to slow down like almost to a screeching halt and um, you know that's kind of a culture shock for a lot of us me included you know I, I just I'm used to going constantly go 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 and here I sit just like everybody else so um, being forced to slow down, you know, maybe it's a time to start thinking about what's really, really important. I mean, you know, it's easy to say, oh, my family's important. My friends are important. My church is important. My job is important. These things are important to us. And I'm not trying to diminish those things. I just think that maybe we should take a closer look. Um, hi, Fox. Oh, it's Fox's mama. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for coming by and saying hi. So yeah, we want to take just, you know, now that you've been forced to slow down, maybe take a little bit of time to enjoy this time. Uh, you know, if you don't have to get up out of bed right away, then don't. I mean, you could, it might not be a bad idea to keep the same kind of sleep schedule, but um, maybe you don't have to, maybe you can just do something a little bit differently. Instead of rushing through dinner, how about just sitting down and talking about whatever, you know, just slow down, read, read a book or watch a movie or do something that you've been planning on doing, but just haven't had the time to do. I'm keeping an eye on my, my cat cause she's being bad. You and your sister school is really overworking us with your work. 
I've heard that from other people, uh, parents included, that they're overwhelmed with trying to help the kids and the amount of work that the kids have. But you don't have homework or it's all homework. You can look at it one way or the other. But once you finish your work, that's it. You don't have to do it again until the next day. So, um, you know, you're basically being homeschooled right now if you're, you know, or you're homeschooling your children. Uh, and, you know, and hopefully this is a way to connect. I know for me and what my children were learning, I probably would be ripping my hair out as well. They're learning things that I learned or didn't learn. Um, you know, things have changed immensely. I, so, you know, it's, it's a trouble and it's hard. Um, they aren't grading it. Hit the thumbs up, everyone. Thanks, Fox. Or Fox's mama. Thank you so much for that. Um, but yeah, we can slow down and just smell the roses or the coffee or whatever it is that you like to smell. Smell it and, you know, enjoy that time. Um, oh, good. Fox is fine. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, that's such a cute little dog, too. I'm, I'm, I have to say that for sure. But, um, you know, this is a, also a really good time to reconnect with other people. Now, granted, maybe you can't go to somebody's house like you used to. I mean, call me Fox. Okay, I'll call you Fox. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um... I just wanted to call you the right words, but anyway, um, yeah, it's a time now where we can reconnect and we are fortunate enough in the, in the times that we live in, we have this awesome technology that we can not just make a phone call. And you know, there was a time when it was actually expensive to call somebody like, okay, so here's a, here's the thing. When I was a little girl, my grandmother had a telephone and she was only allowed a certain amount of phone a regular phone that hooked to the wall and you had to pick it up and put it to your ear not a little phone like like this but a big clunky phone like the old-fashioned kind um but she's she only was allowed to have so many i think it was minutes she was allowed to talk on the phone per month so like if i called her it was real fast and then she didn't even say goodbye she just hung up the phone on you but now you know we have unlimited access here so you know, it's so easy to connect with somebody. You can do your FaceTime, you can Skype, whatever it is that you do. You can, you can actually check in on people and see how they're doing. And, you know, it's easier now for us to check on each other and reconnect. And, um, oh gosh, we can send videos now of, you know, I, I watch videos all the time of my grandchildren. They, uh, they live far away, but my my daughter in particular is very good about putting videos of my little grandson and her daughter online and the things that they're doing so uh, probably an eyelash you know i'm like the worst example of the things that you're not supposed to do so i cough i sneeze i'm going to try not to do that while i'm doing this but i'm constantly touching my face and i'm so aware of it now and I've always been so particular about not touching my face anyway because I don't have the greatest skin. But for some reason, now that this has become a big deal, I'm constantly doing it. But whatever, I'll probably die from some other weird disease. Anyway, yeah, we want to take the time to connect. And so um, I do wash my hands. I wash my hands a lot. So, okay, I'll talk about hand washing for a minute and just how personally it's affecting me. So there's two factors in my life that make me want to wash my hands all the time. The first one is I clean other people's houses. So I'm touching, I wear gloves, you know, most of the time, but even inside the gloves, my hands sweat and you just get the heebie jeebies when you're touching other people's dirty stuff. Okay. So I wash my hands constantly for that reason. But the other reason is, um, for those of you who don't know, Ray, he's a recent amputee, amputee. He lost his um, the lower half of his right leg and he has an infection right now on his left foot and he's already lost one toe there. So we have infection in our house pretty regularly. And of course I have to help him out washing his bandages and emptying, you know, the trash that he uses. Yeah, that's pretty serious, right? So this has been going on longer than this virus has been going on. I mean, this is in our house. It's probably been about two years since we've really had to deal with this. And so 
I, it, he, you know, he, there I go again. He hasn't tested positive for MRSA, but he has tested positive for um, a staph infection. Staph infection in and of itself is pretty bad and dangerous. So, you know, just dealing with him and his laundry and his needs, I wash my hands constantly, constantly. Um, so I'm very, um, uh, he, yeah, he's been septic a couple times. Um, he, I guess about a year ago, got an abscess on the back of his neck and, um, he, anyway, it, it had blown up like overnight and I came in from work one day and he was kind of laying in the armchair and I came in and then he responded when I said, are you okay? Are you dying? You know, and, um. So, you know, mostly the problem with him is in his feet, but he did get that one really nasty abscess on the back of his neck. This may sound weird, but did you live in Maryland? I see you have a 301 number. Yes, I did live in Maryland. I was born and raised in Maryland, specifically Rockville is where I grew up. It's a suburb from D.C., so I spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. as a child, and then as an adult, we moved to um, Frederick County, I raised my kids there, and then, um, when Ray and I decided to be, you know, a committed couple, I lived outside of Baltimore, so, yep, and then, eventually I moved here. Um, Michael says he washes his hands constantly, and the doorknobs, yes, you want to think about that, um, doorknobs, refrigerator knobs, um, remote controls, keyboards, things that people touch constantly. You live super close. You live in Annapolis. I've been to Annapolis. That's a beautiful town. Oh, Annapolis, that's our capital. Well, that's Maryland's capital. It's not my capital anymore, but yes, Annapolis. That's a great place to live. Oh, wow. So that's cool. I didn't know you were from my neck of the woods. Okay. Anyway, talking about connecting with people, um, you know, we're kind of connecting here. So we have Amazing Friday, who's from Maryland. We have Michael, who is from California, and I know things are really bad there. He lives out um, in or near L.A. I don't know exactly, but L.A. is like a ghost town. And then Fox, the computer picked Maryland as the best place for you to live. But now, Fox, you live... I want to say Arizona. Is that right? Uh, I know it's kind of a desert area. So right here we've got the four of us all across the United States. Yes, in Arizona. Okay. Um, well, I can tell you if you ever get a chance to go to Mar Maryland, they call Maryland Little, Little America because it has everything except desert. But we have beaches, we have forests, we have mountains. Um, there's no natural lakes in Maryland, but there are man-made lakes and there's some beautiful, beautiful countryside in Maryland and then um, some beautiful cities. And of course, yes, Maryland has the best crabs, that is for sure. You live in, close to Dodger Stadium. Oh, okay. Wow. So we're all talking about where we lived. <laughs> Who would have thought? I live near Atlanta. I don't live in Atlanta, but I live near Atlanta. And, um, Atlanta reminds me, or the area where I live, not the city of Atlanta, but I live in Gwinnett County outside of Atlanta, and it reminds me a lot of the area where I used to live when I was a kid. Um, you know, the shopping centers and the shopping available is very much like Montgomery County, Maryland, and, um, there's a, the houses are a lot like that here. The Chesapeake Bay Bridge scares you? Well, yeah, I get it. If y'all don't know, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge is considered one of the scariest bridges to cross. And it can be really scary, but it's if you can get over that, especially if you're a passenger, I wouldn't do it as a driver. Um, yeah, the weather can turn anytime. That's true. And there's breezes that go across there. But if you can get past your fear when you're going over the Chesapeake Bridge and can look out, you see some beautiful, beautiful scenery. So, and there's a really, I guess they call it a bridge, but going from the peninsula of Maryland into um, Norfolk, I think, they're painting the bridge. That's good to know. Anyway, going into Norfolk, 
they call it a bridge, but it's kind of weird because you like drive over the water and then you go under the water in a tunnel and you go up and down like this over the water a couple different ways. Can you guys excuse me for one second? My cat's being a bad girl. Hold on one second. I have to get it. My purse. Go on. Get out. Go out. Go, 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 go. Go. Okay. Snickers is banished from my room. So hopefully. Anyway, I guess we should get back on track. Um, yeah, cats, I know, right? I was actually more of a dog person most of my life, but, um, Ray is definitely a cat person, and being with him, I'll tell you a little bit more about him. He can, he can handle any animal in the world, but he likes cats. So, um, Buffer? I don't know why, Buffer? Is that your cat? Buffer? Or is it, is it Buffering? I don't know. Anyway, he likes cats and he will bring a stray home anytime he'll bring a stray home. But I've seen this man pick up all kinds of wild creatures. Oh, it is buffering. You have a pit bull Charlie boy sitting on your lap. Aw, oh, working on your website. No cats right now for Fox. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we have cats all the time now. It's raining night now here over. Oh, okay. So we've got some bad weather factors going in. Um, it could be raining here too. I don't know if that's going to play a factor. I mean, I'm not seeing anything on my screen. Like the last time I live streamed, it looked like it cut out a couple times. But anyway, so um, yeah, we want to we want to talk about getting closer to people or reconnecting with people. Um, my uh, my cousin, his little girl, she's turning 13. Um, She's turning 13 during all of this, and she can't have a party. She can't, you know, it's a pretty significant age, turning 13. She can't go out to dinner. Um, you know, her, her birthday is really going to be kind of sucky, really, for her this year. So he's, on his Facebook, put the address and asked everybody to send cards to her. You know, it's a significant birthday, turning 13. So, you know, that's a way that we can connect or just sending a letter to somebody that, you know, you have been thinking about and you haven't heard, you know, talked to in a while. But, yeah, we want to use the postal system if we can. You know, just think about other people. And one of the other things, and this is really kind of important. It's not just connecting, but being a good neighbor or a good citizen. If you have people living near you who have conditions they're elderly or maybe there's they have a medical condition that makes them more prone to illnesses check on them see if they need anything you know uh, do they need somebody to go pick up their prescriptions for them or run to the store to grab something for them um i'm finding that the, i made a comment i went into the grocery store the other day and i made a comment on my facebook that i feel like i'm in gilead you know when i went into the grocery store because they were like at half of what they normal, maybe less than that even. The, the shelves, a lot of them were bare. A lot of them were like, you know, a group of cans here, a group of cans there, a group of cans here. You know, it's just there's not a lot of inventory in the stores, so it's kind of a weird feeling. But, um, you know, we do, we want to check on people, make sure that they're okay, and, and see if there's anything that they need and if we can help them if they need it, you know. Just um, looking out for our fellow man. Um, you know, but yeah, let's get reconnected to people. Make a phone call, do a Skype or something. Um, and then I was thinking, you know, this, we have a lot of time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Michael says he's always checking on people. And I know that's true. I mean, even before all this, you know, um, Michael and I chat off of, to, uh, YouTube and he'll check up on me you know just to make sure I'm doing okay so he really is he's a good person um, and one day we're talking about maybe meeting I don't know when <laughs> but one day I'm hoping that once he graduates he's gonna come to Atlanta and get a job here um, yeah he's a nice guy he's a really nice guy 
but and then I'll meet him because I don't know if I'll ever get out to California. I know, right? See? Or you'll come out here and you'll start your own animation studio right here in Atlanta. The East Coast Hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks. You guys have to stop doing that. Don't do that anymore. You're going to make me get a fat head. All right. So the other thing, so we have so much time on our hands, is how about catching, um, we are lucky to know each other. We really are. <laughs> And this all happened because of the adpocalypse. That's where we met when everybody was freaking out about the adpocalypse. I think that's when I met you too, actually. Um, Fox it was during the adpocalypse when everybody was um, worried about their monetization and trying to get their hours up and their subscriptions, their sus subscriber count. I think that's when I met Fox. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, this is a really good time to catch up. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been putting out a lot of YouTube videos because certain times it's kind of hard for me. You know, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. It sounds, I think so. Um, you know, yeah, so I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting out my YouTube videos. I'm trying to get caught up on my eBay store. Uh, I could clean around my house a little bit more. You know, um, there's lots of, let me switch to your laptop. You can do whatever you want, Mr. Amazing Friday. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a great time to catch up. So what if there's a book you haven't read or a movie you haven't had time to see? We should do a video call session. Yeah, Michael, we really, really should. You and I are going to talk some more about that pretty soon. Um, we could maybe do that through Facebook or something. It would be easier than, than type chatting, you know. But um I guess, what are some things that you guys have been able to do or you want to plan on doing in the next week or so that um, you haven't had time to do? Uh, you know, duo, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, something that, you know, you, you've been putting off or you just really haven't had a chance. Work on your animations. Absolutely, Michael. Absolutely. Um, I'm waiting to see the, the couple things that you told me you were working on. I can't wait. Um, nothing has changed for you. Nothing has changed for you. So, I, I mean, I don't know that much about you. I know you live in the desert. Um, are you still working or, or have you, do you normally work? Sorry about the jiggly. I'm just trying to make an adjustment here. Um, do you normally work? Okay, you're on your laptop. Thanks for staying around. Uh, oh, you're disabled. Okay. Well, then you're somebody we need to check up on and make sure you're okay. You have everything that you need. Um, I know that's a hard life. You know, I know just from watching what Ray's going through, how hard it is. You're okay. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Please make sure if you do need something and you can't get out or whatever, you know, the case may be, reach out to somebody else. Um, I do have a couple. Oops. I'm sorry. Um, you're happy and healthy. That's good. I have some elderly customers that I, I check on them, but, um, I know one of them, if she needed something, she would call me and ask me. So, um, you know, that's another thing. Don't be afraid to ask. Um, I think the first comment on my video last year, and we talked about shark vacuum cleaners. Yep. I think you're probably pretty right. I know Amazing Friday loves vacuum cleaners. He's always asking me about my vacuum cleaners. Mm hmm Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, you know, we have to help each other out. So I've had in the course of my life different, um, you know, times when I was having a hard time and people came together and helped help me out. So, you know, I want to help other people too. You, know, you have to give it back. So you've been watching my videos since 2015? I didn't even know I'd been on that long. Well, I know in 13 I posted a couple things, but I didn't know I was actively recording that long. My goodness. So you, you're probably one of my oldest followers then. Wow. <clears throat> so, I know, right? I didn't know I had anybody who followed me that long. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Thank you for telling me that. I had no idea. So you're like one of the OG Jen Miss Jenny followers. All right. <laughs> You've been on since 2007. Yeah, you're young. I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> oh, here I go. I'm going to cough. Excuse me. 
Sorry about that. I'm fine. I don't have a fever. Um, and you've been on since the end of 2018. Okay. Our YouTube history. Family tree. How about that? Um, oh, that's when you met me in 2015. How do you guys know this? I don't know how to know this. I just remember from events. Was it? 2018. Hmm. I don't know how you guys know that. <sighs> so, catching up. And I was going to tell you a story about something that blew... Oh, helping each other out. <laughs> helping each other. Your favorite video I made was cleaning all my shark vacuum cleaners. You think I'm memorable? That's so funny that you say that. Like, I just think I'm just a regular person. Uh, I don't think there's anything special about me. I'm not a glamour puss. Although, look at my nails. Look how horrible these nails are. You see that? I was supposed to get them done over the weekend. It hasn't happened. They look terrible. But right now, this is the only glamour I have, right? Like, I've got roots, everything. I'm a mess. But, whatever. I'm over 50, so I don't care. <laughs> I just don't. <coughs> Gosh, excuse me. <coughs> I think I'm okay. You think my nails look good? Thank you so much. Oh, you guys are so sweet. They are mine. Look. Look at this one. Let me see if I can get that up there. That red, that's the color that my nails were the last time. She never got all that off. And that, I got a tip. Look how ugly my natural nail looks there. Ugh. Um, anyway. I don't know why we're talking about that. <laughs> um... Oh, people helping me. So, yeah, okay. So I'm just going to tell you a little story about when I was um, newly divorced. Well, not even divorced yet. I guess I was separated. And I had three kids at home. And, and I clean. Mine go away so quick that I clean. Well, one of the reasons why I got these was because of the cleaning. Because I can, I can grow them, but they break. And I can't keep the polish on them. So I can polish them and then go clean a house. And by the end of the day, they look like you know, bad. So I decided I was going to get them professionally done with, this is, um, S and S, S and S and L, S and S, S and S. I was going to say S and L, which is Saturday night live, but S and S, they're the dip nails. Um, yeah, it's so hard to keep them looking good when you're doing stuff. Um, but why, why I always feel convicted to help people. So Anyway, it was Christmas time. I didn't have a lot of money. I went and I bought some used toys for my kids. And um, I painted them. And I think I made, you know, some dolly clothes or something like that for my little girls. But it was it was really going to be a very hard Christmas for us. It was the first Christmas after, um, you know, my ex-husband and I split up. And I don't even know who did this. But, um, so where I lived in Maryland is a little town called Thurmont. It's very close to Camp David. And in Thurmont, a lot of people from Camp David would come and do business in town. So, somebody that I know knew somebody at Camp David. I don't know who any of these people are. I never have found out. But anyway, they gave my name to Camp David. And they're up in the House Records TV. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Anyway, they gave my name to the ladies' auxiliary or whoever it was that organized this. And um, they brought bags and bags and bags and boxes of stuff for us for Christmas. My entire living room, not just under the tree, but was just filled with presents for my kids. And they brought us food for, a, you know, a Christmas dinner. And I was so touched by that. And... Um, a couple other different times through that period when I was readjusting to being a single mom, um, people did things for me. Sometimes I knew who it was. A lot of times I didn't know who it was. Yeah. I mean, to, and I remember to this day. And, you know, they even brought a little gift for me. It was just a little, like, um, makeup kit or something. Um, something like that. Something personal, you know. But um, it just made me think, you know... You could say God has been good to me or the people in the community have been good to me. And you you give back. You I think you get what you give out. So, you know, it's always, it's just better. It's good karma for you. You know, when you go and you do for somebody else, 
when you need it, it will come back to you. It may not be the way you expected because I didn't ask for anybody to bring me anything ever. I've never really asked, um, very rarely. Um, but people have been good to me when I've been in need. So yeah, I try to help other people out too, because I do believe that you get what you give. Yep. I do the best I can. And I, so anyway, that's, that's kind of why I always try to think of that thing. Um, I haven't heard anything. I know a lot of the churches are, well, a lot of everything's closing down, but um, a lot of the churches right now, they might be doing online services. They're, I know a lot of them are not having people come to the, wherever they have their, their um, services. They're not having people come in. But I, I've been thinking, this has been going through my mind. Um, when you were a kid, there was a church ski trip that you couldn't afford to go on and somebody anonymously paid for you to go. It was awesome. Yeah. You know, like these, these blessings come from nowhere. So, um, there's another thing that I'm thinking about that I don't know. I don't really know what's going on. It's just my common sense puts things in my head about certain things that kind of happen as a result of other things. So, I know that the state of Pennsylvania is no longer selling alcohol, which, you know, it's easy to make jokes about that. And I think I talked about this in the last live stream that, um, you know, being addicted to alcohol is, is a, can be a medical condition. It can also be a mental disorder. Okay. Where somebody feels that they need to drink, they're not necessarily physically addicted, but they they abuse or they rely on alcohol to cope. You ran out of food and toilet paper two days ago, and your best friend Jr. Mom helped you out because you were blessed to have people like that. Yeah. Well, it's not just the alcoholics that I'm concerned about; it's the people that they live with. Because you know, if you've ever seen somebody going through withdrawal, they they can be difficult. You know, and a lot of people who self medicate have other issues going on. So, um, you know, my concern is for families that maybe, yeah, you know, what, you know, is the certain things going to happen? Like there's been jokes about a baby boom happening, but what about a raise in domestic violence? I'm really concerned about that. I did, you know, I, okay. I've been a victim more than once. Um, I had an abusive mother who had mental illness. I'll talk to you guys about that more later on, but I guess we'll break the ice. Um, give a like for the stream. Thank you so much, Fox. Anyway, um, and I was married to an abusive man for a while. So the funny thing is the abusive guy was not any kind of an addict. Miss Tony, you're really happy that you're doing this live because with uh, everything has been super stressful. It really helps to talk with people who can go through what we're going through. Yeah, that's the whole point of this. That it doesn't have to be all bad. I mean, I'm talking about bad things right now with people who are addicted who can't get the, the substances that they need. And nobody's talking about this either. But, you know, with our borders closed, there's other drugs that's going to be in short supply. Um, these are the facts. You know, I'm not condoning these things. But I know when somebody can't get their fix, they may not be a nice person. You know, things happen. And... You know, we just need to, I guess, you know, send good vibes or pray or however you spiritually put your goodness out into the world. We want to think about that and, um, you know, pray that these people get through that too in their families. Um, yeah, so I have been thinking about that. Uh, anyway, yeah, that wasn't such a happy thought, but. It is something to think about, and I haven't really seen anything about that. Oh, I know what the other thing I wanted to talk about was. You know, the, a lot of people are losing money. It's okay. You can come back and watch the rest later. Thank you so much for stopping by and, and chatting with us. Um, I'll check in on you probably a couple times over the next couple days. <laughs> but thanks a lot. Have a good night. Um, you know, with people not working, they're not going to be able to buy food. Food, there's going to be a shortage of money in people's pocketbooks and um, I know you know typically in the springtime here I go again in the springtime uh, the the food banks and the, the pantries tend to get lower um, donations anyway 
so this is just something else to think about if it if it's at all possible you know how can you help in that way when we get back on to some kind of a normal day-to-day -day life again so I really only had one other thing that um, I was thinking about as far as you know getting the positives um, and it really has to do with being creative and I'm actually going to do another video I guess I'll do it either tonight or tomorrow and post it it won't be a live stream but um, we want to try to get creative so we you know we have a lot of time on our hands it's so easy to get bored when you're not rushing around like you normally do and especially if you have um, oh, I'm glad you're still here um, if you have children at home you know they're gonna get bored you're gonna get frustrated with them you know um, you don't even have a yard to put them outside what can you do to get creative to help maybe get some bonding get some of that excess energy out do something different and um, I was also thinking about maybe creating memories you know um, how can we create memories especially for our kids um, it's it's easy to grump and complain and you know be negative and the kids feel that they know when we're not happy and they really shouldn't I mean yes yes we need to teach them to wash their hands and and other things that they need to do so that we don't spread disease we should be teaching them that on a daily basis even without this crisis because that's just you know good personal hygiene but we don't want our kids to be traumatized any more than what's necessary so for now the example that I have in mind um, for some of the ideas if you guys watch this is us uh, a couple seasons ago they were supposed to be going somewhere for Thanksgiving and things didn't work out the way they had planned and they put together this makeshift Thanksgiving and um, the three kids when they showed them as adults was actually they carried on the tradition you're a first grade math student teacher and you feel like you wasted your whole month lesson planning and it was a lot easier church schooling I don't know that much about that I I mean I guess it depends on where you are I don't know how the kids are learning I know they're learning online but I don't know how they're doing that I think in my last live stream I had said something about helping out parents and kids um, through like Facebook if you had a Facebook group for each school or each class for your students or for the kids in the school to help them with things that they're stuck on or getting you know could you do like a live session to help out with a particular point in a lesson that is you know maybe hard to just read about um, I mean I don't know how they're doing it I don't know if they're doing webcams or, or what you know I imagine it's very frustrating for you know somebody who teaches and loves to teach that well this is where I'm talking about getting creative okay you saw the video of a family make a pretend Disneyland at their home it was really creative I'll try to send it. oh yes yeah, send me that see that's what I'm talking about there's the okay so he, you know apparently this family made their own Disney Disneyland and that's a great idea you know and some of the things that I have on my list are things like that like you know can you have a camp out in your living room um, you know there's lots of things that you can do um, you know play uh, they're talking about you know I hear a lot of talking about board games and things like that what if you don't have board games what can you do your school sent over a student MacBook and we FaceTime them. Okay. Also go live on your face for families who need to also use Google Classroom. Super helpful. So that's good to know. I see I didn't know what they were doing to help you, you know. I, I just know that sometimes you can't get it when you read it. It's good to see it. Or if you can ask a question, you know, to get some better insight on whatever it is that you're learning. But yeah, I think we need to get creative and um I'm gonna do a video and put out some ideas to help 
maybe stimulate those creative juices and I promise that video is going to be very inexpensive um because we don't go to the stores and a lot of us don't have the money for it anymore so um I'm going to sign off and I do want to thank each and every one of you for coming by and commenting and all of your support and um all your praises that was ridiculous oh my god <laughs> I will be back tomorrow morning with one of my organizational challenge videos we're almost at the end of that thank god you see how things go there's an example right there I had to slow down I was so busy with everything that kind of came on us so suddenly that I stopped got a little emotional about all that but um I'm back on track and I'm almost at the end of the 30 days we're on day 26 yay and um I'll see you guys tomorrow don't forget to subscribe comment ask questions Give me a thumbs up. I know everybody that I've seen in the chat today gave me a thumbs up and I appreciate it. You guys take care. Please be safe, be healthy, and try to find some joy out of all this. You guys have a great night. Bye-bye.